Hello everyone, my name is George Slatkovsky and welcome to this in-depth tutorial video for JS Curve Tools plugin for Maya. In this video we will explore every function that this tool has. So this will be probably a little bit longer video, but if you want a quick overview, the quick tutorial on the workflow, how to use this tool, how to uh, create templates and use UV editor, there will be a companion video that I will, it's a little bit shorter. Um, that shows everything that you need to get started. And after that, if you still need more information, you can watch this video. So let's get started. The first thing you will see is the three buttons over here, the UIs, uh, the, this like recycle button over here and Dell. So Dell will just close the tool and that's it. It will close and will stop some background things that you don't need. And uh, you basically back to your old boring Maya without this tool. This reset button will basically reset every function and every option in this tool to the default value. So if you have some issues, you just press this reset button and it will open a new window with everything set to default. So all of the options, everything. And of course, this first one is just to show and hide the tool. You can set a hotkey to it and uh, you will basically be able to show and hide this tool on a click. You can also dock this window whenever you want and you can explore all of the hotkeys in settings and preferences, hotkey editor. Let it just open over here. You need to go to custom scripts, JS, curve tools, and you will see all of the buttons, all of the functions, and you can set the hotkey whenever you want. You'll see I already set the duplicate and the delete curve hotkey over here. And there are plenty of other functions here. So let's get started. When you first open the tool, you'll see that warp and extrude switch over here. Those are two different types of cards. They use a little bit different algorithm. The warp cards and tubes, they have a lot of options. Uh, they are very advanced, but they can be a little bit slower um, when you use a lot of them. The way Maya works is that if it's just sitting in your scene, it will not slow your scene. But when you start st uh, moving stuff around, you will see that the uh, warp cards are slower than extrude. And you, of course, you can read the tooltips on every button over here if you just hover over them. So to switch between them, you will see that some buttons will, will be highlighted like that. That means that those will be created with extrude algorithm. The default is warp. I recommend you to use warp, but if you need extrude, you can use it for shorter hair, for example. They don't need so many options that warp has, and they will be in general faster. So let's create a new card. Let's click a new card over here. And as you can see, in the middle of the world, let me just create, uh, let me just show the grid. In the middle of the world, you will create a new card that you can move around just like regular objects in Maya. And you, if you switch to control points, you will be able to change it just like that. And as you can see, the geometry uh, over here will follow the curve. So this is the basic stuff the tool has, geometry card that is attached to a curve. But there's a lot more to it than this. So let's create a tube just to compare. As you can see, we already have, let's place it over here somewhere. Um, and the same thing goes for tube. You can just like select CVs and stuff like that. Don't worry about the, hi uh, the highlights. I will show you how to better show um, CVs and stuff later. So now we have tube and a car. So what we can do with it? Well, move around as I already told you, but you can also open the curve control window over here. And you will see that we have quite a few options if we select the card, the, to, the window will update automatically based on what you select. So I will select a card and let's start from the top. So divisions. We can change divisions. We can uh, change the divisions. Of course, this curve control window is multi-select compatible. So as you can see, if I select multiple cards, it will just change multiple uh, cards and tubes. You can change division to anything you want. You can select auto division. Uh, this will change the division based on the length of the curve. So if you start increasing the length of the curve, you'll see that divisions will update dynamically based on the size of the curve. And this value becomes the density. So if you want a lower density, but you still need to update it just like that, it will 
um, the auto mode will update it with the lower density that's the, the wrong CV uh, with the lower density but it will update it nonetheless it will try to maintain the size of quads over here I'll let me just increase the density a little bit so this is the length divisions the width divisions it's just the same it's just width divisions let me just increase it a little bit the orientation will rotate the card around the curve the twist will twist the tip and inverted twist will tw uh, twist the root of the card uh, the root of the card is where you have the square CV. This is the beginning of the card. As you can see, it's like square over here. This is the root. And the normal round one is the tip over here. So let's go to the next option over here. As you can see, this is a long button over here. It actually hides a graph. If you open the graph, you'll see that it, it's a twist curve graph. So you can basically do anything you want you can twist any point of this curve using this graph and if i start moving this point over here you'll see that i twist the tip and i will start to twist the middle part of the card just like that and this and of course you can add as many points as you want over here and you can reset the curve over here so this is very useful because sometimes you have those uh, cards uh, like uh, overlapping in a weird way and you just need a small point where you will actually twist it and you just find this point and twist it a little bit just to fix that small point and of course you can add more points just to uh, narrow the twist over here as you can see I'm twisting only the small part and of course the reset curve will reset it back so this is the twist uh, the width will just width change the width of the uh, geometry you can always type a bigger value over here and it will uh, reset the slider to the bigger range just like that taper will basically taper the tip of the card it's a very simple thing but it's very useful for uh, such shapes as hair cards and with uh, let me just go to taper one and with curve graph is the same as twist but for width so you can use it to basically create any shape you want with uh, the cards as you can see width will change based on this graph just like that reset works as well you can also just like pop it out like that and make it as big as you want if you don't need uh, precision so uh, let's go to the next length unlock will unlock the length so as you can see I can basically unlock the length and uh, change how much of the curve is actually affecting the geometry just like that I usually don't use it but it's there offset uh, it's a little bit broken right now with uh, the latest update uh, but in general it will just offset offset the card on the curve it's very useful when you have the uh, the length length of the card that's shorter than the curve and you will just use offset to move it on the curve but if you go outside of the curve right now as you can see it kind of flies into space a little bit after the latest update but uh, if you use it for the for this movement inside the curve just like that it works perfectly so let's just uh, go to zero offset just like that like it was before 20 length and profile curve graph this is very very important it's connected to profile so profile will just create this uh bulging shape over here like that and as, as you can see i've just increased it past the i'll uh, i'll hold i hold control and right click to increase it past the limit of this uh, slider and it will basically increase the slider you can just reset the sliders if you want the default range so as you can see I've increased the profile but it increases it uniformly along the card like that but it's not uh, what you want sometimes right it's not what you want sometimes you want this first part the, the root part to be flatter because this is the part that actually touches the scalp over here right and it needs to be flat to actually conform or almost flat to conform to the head better so what you can do is open the profile curve graph as you can see we have a bunch of points over here I don't need those points right now we'll just delete them and I will drag this thing to the zero and as you can see now the root this left part is the root the root is flat 
and everything else is still the default profile value over here i can of course ease it out a little bit just for it to be more naturally shaped like that so this is profile curve graph use it to uh, change the profile along the curve now the normals is just the normals uh, from maya you can decrease the smoothing of the normals and as you can see it's now it now becomes like a art shape like that but by default i think it's better to use like just the default value and reverse normals will basically let me just disable the two-sided lighting uh, reverse norm normals will be just disable uh, reversing the normals of the card and that's it so there are other th things over here you can you can open the sampling accuracy and refine but i do not recommend you to change them because they are mostly the debug values for some very edge cases um, you can read about them if you hover over them uh, just leave it on auto for now now orient to normals orient normals is very cool feature of curve control let me just show you for example i have let me hide everything else that i don't need i actually can to do this uh, and this so i have this first layer and for example i want to orient it to the scalp of the head i will just mess up with the orientation a little bit what i can do i can select the body just like that in the curve control i will select body as a target or you can just type this uh, name over here i will select all of the curves that i need orienting as you can see this menu is still here and i will click orient and that's it it's now calculated uh, the normals of the head and oriented the cards to the normals of the head very very useful fun function especially for those first layers of the groom that can be a little bit tricky to match to the head but as you can see it pretty much did the perfect work over here for me so orient to normal it will show uh, in this curve control whenever you select curves or geometry select select uh, target and orient iterations is the number of iterations that you uh, it allow it to run for the more iterations the more precise but it will be much longer so uh, just keep it on 10 or even i don't know five maybe uh, minimum angle is the um, tolerance so it will try to match as close as possible but if it reaches the minimal angle uh, it will just uh, stop iterating so it's like it's fine one one degree is fine uh, for for it or five degrees for example can be fine as well it will affect the speed as well and refresh viewport is basically will uh, disable the effect of those cars uh, snapping to the mesh like uh, i showed you before uh, it will, can be a little bit faster um, on older machines for example just not to update the viewport every time all right so uh, let's go to solidify solidify is basically a way to add thickness to your mesh so if you enable solidify as you can see it's a toggle button over here you'll see that we have now thickness so before we had only single uh, sided card and now we have thickness just like that if your project requires it you can do this and there are a bunch of options that you can use you can scale it a little bit uh, horizontally vertically you can offset it uh, you can change the normals of the this thick part over here and of course disable the solidify if you want and when you solidify you can still control it with a single curve now uv controls over here is basically a legacy um, option as you can see we have some parameters do not use them use the uv editor over here i will show you it a little bit later and finally the advanced visibility so if i disable the advanced visibility you will see that when i select the curve i don't even see if i selected it it's a little bit easier to see when you work with uh, transparent textures like that as you can see i can see the curve but if you work with just mesh or if the texture is very very dense it can be hard to understand if you actually selected the curve at all so advanced visibility will enable the curve highlight or geometry highlight or both so if i enable curve highlight uh, whenever i select the curve 
it will be highlighted just like that. And if I enable geometry highlights, you'll see that geometry will highlight will be highlighted as well of the curve and object that I select. It will can be very useful when you select stuff on the head. As you can see, now I can see exactly which geometry I will affect. And if I change the orientation like that, I will see that I'm changing this small geometry and then maybe I want to change this white part over here. And just like that, the highlight over here, there are a bunch of options. You can uh, change the CV size, for example. If you increase the CV size, you can increase them a little bit to, to be more visible for you. It will not increase the original CVs of mine. Unfortunately, it's not possible. It will just increase highlight. So you cannot still select them. If you, for example, click on the side of this rectangle over here, you need to box select them, but it will increase uh, this, the, the width just for you to see it better. Of course, you can change colors, transparency, curve visibility. You can also enable hull. Uh, hull is basically a line that connects uh, the CVs like that. You can change its color, width and stuff like that. So there is a lot of options. Now, another cool option of advanced visibility is in the other tab over here. You can select the CV occlusion over here. So if you select your mesh as an occluder like that, uh, and then enable CV occlusion. Uh, what you will see if I select this mesh, if I switch to, let me just do it a little bit. Uh, if I switch, uh, if I click F8 and I switch to, and disable hull, of course, switch to the CV points, you will see that I can only see points that are in front of the mesh, but not on the back of the mesh. And it can be also a little bit uh, more helpful just not to be overwhelmed by a lot of points in the scene. So it can be a little bit expensive on the computation. So by, by default it's disabled. As you can see, those points are now visible, uh, but you can still use it. Just don't forget to select the occluder over here. And this is it with the curve control. Let's go to UVs. If I show my templates over here really quickly, let me just show you how the UV editor works. So you've created your templates. You can see the an another video how I made that. Uh, and uh, you want to change the UVs of that template. Let me just disable the geometry highlight for now. Uh, you want to change the UVs, right? So by default, it will be something like... Uh, let me just reset it. Uh, by default, it will be something like this, right? So you need to change the UVs on each card. This is very easy to do with the UV editor. You just open it like that and you select uh, the UV with the select, the pressing Q. You can just uh, click draw and you can now draw the UV just like that. You can move it with W just like that. You can rotate it with E and you can scale it with R on two axis like that. So very easy to control. Uh, but I use draw most of the time. So I select the card and I will draw it like that. And as you can see, it's already there. I can also use V button to flip the vert it vertically or H to flip it horizontally, just like that. So let's just uh, set it up really quickly. Let's select this. Uh, let's uh, flip, it, flip it like that. Let's select this and do this like that and select this and do this like that select this and uh, let's just uh, do it like that and so on as you can see it's very fast very easy and you can also change multiple textures at the same time as you can see you can change the more uh, complex objects that we'll talk about later as you can see it's, it also has like three uh, cards over here you can change them in UV editor as well. So what are other options of UV editor? We already see, saw the control mode. We can flip horizontally, vertically. We can reset it to pressing X. It will reset it to the default value. We can sync selection. For example, if we have multiple objects selected over here, we can select the UVs and we can sync selection to the viewport. So now we have only those, those objects will be selected in the viewport, just like that. So sync selection is very useful. If you don't know, for example, what is this uh, card that is reset over here, let's just sync selection you will, and you will see that this is the one over here, just like that. And randomize will basically randomize the placement of the cards between already existing 
cars so, so it's a little bit complex let's just uh, say that we have a bunch of cars like that right and we want to randomize them between each other basically so if i click randomize you'll see that they will remain in their places but they will switch places randomly so it can be very useful if you want to uh, make some kind of uh, randomization on your project and this is uh, like one button to do that and if you click uh, hold shift it will basically completely randomize everything so before it tried to um, try to maintain the ratio ratio for example if there are like two cars here one card here three cars here it will maintain that ratio but if you hold shift and randomize it will just randomize between these positions absolutely randomly now the uv list is just to show and hide uh, uvs in this viewport over here just for you to find uh, the car that you need and then adjust it just to hide everything else uh, focus you view will just focus on the selected or on the texture so if i select this i can focus on this one and this and this and if i isolate for example let me just select uh, this one i will isolate uh, only those two cards that i was selecting before hide will just hide and show all will show all options will change the uh, grid the transparency you can enable alpha alpha for example sometimes it's much better to see uh, the alpha not the color to set up your uvs and uh, use transforms you can just read about those transforms it's rarely used I, I don't think that you need it at all and of course the colors that i mentioned the grid the uv uh, border everything you can change it here in the options all right so moving on we have uh, our cards over here you don't need to create a new cards in a card in the middle of the world every time you can just switch to front view like that and you can for example create a curve just like that as you can see i will rebuild it and i will use curve card or curved tube to actually create curved card or tube and you will have your card over here so uh, curve card and curve tube, uh, tube basically convert curve to card or tube so bind bind is very uh, fun function and let me just create a curve just like that bind will basically bind everything that you select curves and geometry to a single empty maya curve as you can see i have created one over here and i have this template over here that consists of multiple uh, curves like that so what you can do is you can select this and you can select this and you can click bind and it will bind it to that single curve and now you can control it just like your one curve like that it also has options like width and orientation and twist curve and stuff like that so there are plenty of options for bind object as well uh, but uh, the main uh, goal is to create these uh, complex shapes like braids over here and make them easy to be placed uh, on the head. Just like use one curve for that, not like th three or more uh, to avoid distortion and stuff like that. So bind will do that for you. And let me just unbind it really quickly. Just undo this. And you can of course uh, hold shift for example uh, holding shift will duplicate original object before bind that's it so it will be here over here like that and uh, holding shift will place it on this uh, curve but it will leave the original object in place now unbind is exactly how it sounds you will just unbind uh, this uh, object that you bound to this curve from this single curve but it will not place it in the original place over here it doesn't know where it was uh, so it will basically place it in the middle of the world if i click on bind you will see that now i have the original object but it is it, it was placed in the middle of the world uh, that can be a little bit annoying but that's the only way you can do this with this uh, kind of shape so let me just delete it this and delete this now if uh, we hold shift and you can find it by um, hovering over the, over the unbind, you will use the unpack function. Now, unpack will uh, recreate the original curves. For example, this object is uh, created from three curves 
over here and you you'll see that i have three geometries over here uh, unpack will basically uh, recreate the shape but it will unpack it it will create three cards from this complex object so if i click shift and unpack it you will see that now that uh, now i have three objects over here where i had only one and of course the original one is just left behind but now i have this unpacked object that i can adjust as i want you cannot rebind it back well you can but if you do this unpacking with something more complex like uh, something that you already placed on the head like for example this one right you already placed it and you click uh, like on uh, unpack i'm holding shift before the unbind you'll see i have unpacked it right uh, but i cannot bind it back there's no way to bind it back because it's already distorted like that so you cannot do that but if you need to adjust its shape a little bit when you already placed it you can unpack it afterwards now add card add tube and fill basically do the exact thing same thing uh, i recommend you to use fill for almost everything that you do but add card and add tube will uh, do uh, the similar thing let me just duplicate this thing over here and you'll see that if i click add card for example it will add three cards between these cards but as you can see there's a little bit problem a problem with the width that's why i don't recommend use uh, to, to use add card or add tube because it, it can have uh, some uh, inconsistencies but if you use fill for example it will fill the space between two selected curves with new curves and uh, you will see that i said that i need three and it added three curves just like that so use add card add tube or fill if you need to add something between curves now the selection order is very important because if you select it out of order as as i will do this on purpose right now you will see that when i click fill it will do this uh, weird thing where it basically added it in this shape like that so i had my selection order wrong and it added it in wrong place so i need to select it in the correct order just like that and then fill and you will see that now it will do a proper job over here now edge to curve is very simple function you can select any number of uh, separate curves uh, separate edges like that edge loops or just edges like that they do not um, need to be loops but they uh, they need to be separate for this to work if you want to select multiple or just select one if you want so as you can see i have this right now and i will click edge to curve and it will create curves based on those edges and i can of course use curve card to create uh, cards on those edges just like that now geo to curve over here is very complex uh, tool um, but it's actually very easy to use uh, if you just need some basic stuff it will convert any geometry to compatible curves uh, with geometry attached compatible to gs curve tools so you can just select any separate geometry cards like that and you can convert them to the cards just like that as you can see and now we have all of the options that we need over here just like that and before it was just a regular geometry as you can see it's just just the geometry nothing else so you can use uh, geo to curve with multiple options over here you can create automatic shape so, so it will determine the shape of the original object you can create cards tubes only curves for example if you just select curves it will just create a curve uh, where it thinks it should be for that geometry but on auto it will determine the shape automatically you can reverse curve you can delete the little original object you can use aim mesh the aim mesh is important if you try to uh, you are trying to convert your uh, regular geometry groom to the curve tools groom uh, aim mesh can be uh, a body mesh for example like that you can select it like that and it will use this mesh to orient the, the root and the tip correctly so it will try to place the root of the newly created procedural card closer to the scalp uh, at as it's supposed to be uh, so if you don't use this aim mesh it will just do this randomly and you might not want that so 
use aim mesh if you already have your scalp over here and you just want to convert some geometries to procedural cards and you want this root node to be near the scalp uh, the where it's supposed to be. UV match options will just vertically flip or horizontally flip the UVs if you have some specific needs in your original UV mesh. It will also uh, match UVs if you have, but UVs must be simple square UVs just yet like you see in the UV editor. If you have some weird tapered shape, it will not match it. It will only match it if it's uh, the, your, your original UVs are this shape. Now let's go to the layers and collections. Uh, layers are very, very important because uh, it's very hard to organize something like this. Uh, if you have very complex project, just like that one, it's very hard to do this on one layer and not go crazy. So you have those layers. So those, those are basically containers where you store your cards. When you click on the layer, you will see that it is now highlighted in white and it means that new card, new tube and other th options will place new cards in this layer. The only exception is uh, duplicate. Duplicate will place uh, the duplicated card in the same layer that it, it was duplicated from. So duplicate will not be affected by this highlight, but everything else will. So if you want to create a new card in this layer, you will just highlight, highlight it and create. As you can see, it's now highlighted uh, with orange color over here, and you will see that it's now uh, this card is now created in that, uh, that layer. The important thing about layers is that you can show and hide them and uh, show different components of the uh, curve, like geometry or the curve, using those layers and filters on top. So, for example, if you hold Alt, you'll see that I am now hiding and showing the layers just like that. If you hold Alt and Shift, you will isolate, select some layers like that. And if you use those things on the top, all curve and geo, you'll see all will show you all. Curve will only show you curves on all layers and Geo will only show Geo. Geo is most um, useful because you can now look at your work without all of those curves interfering. Now other hotkeys you can find by hovering over uh, the zero layer over here and you'll see that shift click additively selects the contents of the layer. So if you want to select multiple layers, the curves from multiple layers, you can just cl uh, click shift, uh, hold shift and click on the layers. And as you can see now I've selected everything. And if we go over here and look what we have, control click will exclusively select. So if you want just to select some part of the your room like that, it will select those Alt will, of course, hold show and hide, as I already told you. And there are plenty of other options. You can also middle uh, use middle mouse button to drag between layers over here. And if you hold Shift and drag, it will basically duplicate those layers. As you can see, now I have two sets of the same cards uh, because I hold Shift when I dragged the layer. As you can see, they are identical. So uh, just explore all of the hotkeys while hovering over here. Uh, let's go and talk about color. Color mode is very fun. It can help you determine between separate layers if you uh, need it. As you can see now, when the color mode is enabled, our my mesh is now colored into different colors. You can control it, of course. And uh, I can clearly see the separate layers of the cards. So let's just disable color for now. And open this layer names and colors. You will see that all of the layers, there are actually uh, quite a few more layers than 20, uh, they have their own colors associated with them. But you can, of course, randomize it. You can just set it manually. Uh, I like to use gradients. So you click over here, you can generate gradient. And now all of these cards will be using this gradient color over here. And if I click on color again, you will see that uh, I forgot to set to scene. You need to click set to scene and it will uh, basically apply those colors that you selected over here to the scene. As you can see now, it's even easier to see the separate layers just like that. And you can also uh, name your layers, but that will come later. You can also save the preset. 
save as preset will save this thing to a global preset that you can use in other projects now so if you just save as preset you can just load it then and it will have the same preset in the other projects as well so you can also just randomize those colors if you want maybe you'll find some more interesting uh things over here as you can see this is just diff different colors uh, and uh, there are plenty of options and if you disable color it will just uh, return you back to your original textures now extract selected and extract all is very simple uh, you'll just uh, you can select part of the groom extract and you will see that now you have the geometry component extracted the original uh, curves they are not touched at all you will just have the geometry to work with or extract all will of course extract every uh, geometry component in this groom into a separate mesh that you can then just export and uh, use in engine to check it and stuff like that whatever you want so you can even just export everything just extract everything and uh, poly model the things that you need to adjust later it takes some time because there's a lot of course in this project and now you, you'll see that uh, i have this separate mesh that is basically all of the hair on this uh, groom and all of the original layers they are just hidden so if i just click all they are back now if you want to extract and export you can just uh, hold control and if you hold control it will automatically open the export window for you right after the export and if you can uh, then export and do stuff like that and click uh, export it will close the window and it will delete the extracted mesh so you can just continue your work like before with nothing changed it will just save you some clicks so holding control or on extract all or extract selected will automatically open the ex uh, export window for you select curve select geo select group will basically uh, select the component of this complex object as i already told you um, the curve is not the only thing that is uh, in this object there is geometry there's other stuff you can just select uh, the curve because the curve is already selected it did nothing but you can select geometry as you can see now we have selected the geometry component it can be easy um, way to add the textures to your geometry or you can just select the group it will select basically the entire work group of this uh, object uh, it's rarely needed because it, on, it, it only it's only needed if you want to delete this object but i recommend you to set the hotkey for delete uh, uh, delete curve it can be found in the hotkey editor and of course if you have uh, the group selected just like um just like that you can uh, select the curve component with select curve as you can see now the curve is selected and you can move it so select curve select geo select group now group curves is very simple function you select some curves you uh, type a name and you group them together and you will see that now they are grouped into the my name uh, I don't know if you can see this behind my camera I will just put it over here on top uh, my name group over here and I see I have those cards grouped together if you just want to regroup them later to something my name like my name too you can regroup them and as you can see they will be regrouped in the other group just like that now regroup by layer is very uh, powerful function it will basically organize your outliner based on your layers over here if i click on regroup by layer right now you'll see that i now have all of my layers in the outliner just like they are over here this will not dynamically update uh, like you need to click it actually for it to update because it will be very slow otherwise but it will regroup it by your current set setup over here and it will name it basic uh, basically layer zero layer, layer one layer two or you can select all of your custom names over here as you can see uh set to scene regroup by layer and as you can see now we have our custom names over here but i prefer the default one and let's just regroup by layer 
Now you might see that uh, I had the those layers like col colorful before and now they are all gray. You can enable it in the options, colorize, regroup layers just like that. And then just when you regroup, it will colorize them based on the layer color you selected in this layer customization window. And of course, you can set it, save it as preset, as I, uh, as I already told you. So if you like some, some stuff, you can save it as preset and just use it later. Now let's go to utility functions. Those are pretty fun. And let's start with uh, transfer attributes. For example, uh, let me just make this a little bit more visible like that. For example, I can even do something like this. You have this card over here, right? And it has like a twist and it has like some specific profile that you really like. You can transfer these attributes to any other number of cards in the scene. For example, I, I will select this, I will select those, and I will click transfer attributes. And now the first card that you, will sele uh, you, you selected is the source card and every other cards are the targets. You can reverse this process by selecting first the targets and then the source card and just uh, hold shift and it will do the same, uh, but uh, now the order of operations basically is reversed. The last card in the selection is your source. It, and it will even show you the source over here, the name. Now, the other thing that you can use is the copy and paste attributes. This is very useful as well, as, especially if you um, set it as a hotkey. You can copy your attributes from this card and paste it to any number of other cards you selected. And it will remember this uh, uh, attribute uh, for a little bit, a little while until you, of course, copy something else. I can copy, for example, uh, this and play, uh, paste it over here. As you can see, now we have the same width and the same twist, uh, basically no twist, uh, as we had on our source. So copy paste as, uh, works very nicely here. Uh, the same thing is available for UVs because UVs are separate. So you can just um, copy UVs, you can paste UVs. As you can see, UV is now uh, copied from to uh, from this card to this card. Uh, sometimes you do not want to copy some uh, copy and paste some attributes or transfer some attributes. You can do uh, some filtering by holding right click on the transfer attributes and this um, square button over here clicking on this square button, you'll see that we have attribute filters. For example, if you deselect some of the attributes, they will not be transferred. For example, I do not want to transfer length divisions, dynamic divisions, uh, toggle or something else. I can just disable it and click save. And now if I have some crazy divisions over here, uh, let me just show you like that, uh, and some crazy twist over here, right? I will just copy attributes, I will just paste these attributes. As you can see, divisions did not change, but twist was applied. So uh, there are filters, you can use them to pick and choose which attributes you need to transfer. Now reset pivot is uh, the most uh, basic thing you can do. You just, if you moved your pivot somewhere else and it's now like not in the root or the tip where you want it, you can just uh, click on reset pivot and it will reset it back to the root node. If you hold shift, it will reset it to the tip of the card. So remember root is where you have the square one, you have the square CV is the root one. And of course, every other CV is just a regular CV like that. So root CVs are important because they should be near the scalp. Now the slider, select uh, CV slider is very simple uh, function as well. If you just don't want to pick and choose which one you selected over here, uh, even with advanced visibility, this can be a little bit annoying. You can just select the curve and you can select the CV just like that. And as you can see, now it will slide between the CVs based on this slider over here. I don't have a lot of CVs here, so it uh, is a little bit choppy. Uh, let me just rebuild this curve over here. And as you can see now, it will just pick and choose whichever CV you stop on over here. And you can also enable soft selection to see it better. As you can see, now it will just go from one, one CV to another and select it. Now rebuild curve, you just saw it's very simple. You just select the curve. 
and you rebuild the number of divisions on that curve just like that holding this slider over here and of course you can R button will basically rebuild to this number so if I rebuild it it will see you'll see that it re rebuilt it to 13 and if you f f accidentally select it like 500 over here and your slider is now in this crazy range between 1 and 999 you can just reset reset the range of the slider to 1 to 50 use uh, using this button all right so uh, now duplicate is most important function ever in this uh, tool because uh, all you will going to do is to duplicate a bunch of cards and place them so it will basically do just that it will duplicate your card and you can now move it and duplicate and stuff there is a hotkey available for example i will use uh, alt d and i will duplicate just like that and it's very easy to place your new cards now randomize is very interesting function it will basically randomize parameters of your curve and cvs as well so open this window over here and you first need to enable sections over here so for example control point section over here i want to lock the first cv i don't want it to move ever and i want all the axis of control over here and now when i start dragging this slider you will see that the curve will go a little bit crazy it will basically randomize itself based on the options that i selected but this is just a preview it will just show you the magnitude of your actions over here but if you want to apply them you will click randomize and as you can see it now randomized the curve you can just undo and randomize it in different way if you want same thing for rotation orientation twist it will just randomize parameters of the curve uh, the same way uh, with the selection for example if you select a bunch of curve and you, uh, curves and you want to select uh, just a few of them based on the slider you can just enable the selection and start dragging and as you can see uh, let me just enable highlight and as you can see it will only select the number of curves based on the slider from basically zero percent curve selected to 100 curves select uh, percent curves selected just like that and if i want to select half of these curves that i've selected before randomly i will just put it in the middle and i will click randomize and as you can see i now have half of the curves selected and the other half will be deselected now extend and reduce will basically just extend the curve a little bit uh, lengthwise as you can see it will just extend it a little bit and reduce will basically cut it a little bit it can be useful to finally adjust some of the curves when you work and smooth it will be do exactly what it uh, it tells you it will smooth the cvs so it will it, it will not be as crazy i will just increase the factor like that and i will smooth it a little bit look at this you see now it's smooth all right so mirroring is very simple function as well if you want to uh, something to be mirrored on the uh, world axis because well usually your mesh is in the middle of the world just like mine is i mean the x axis over here uh, you will just uh, select it and uh, click mirror and that's it and it will just mirror it to the other side um, you can also flip it as you can see it now flips over here and that's it this is a very simple function now control curve is somewhere in the middle between the just controlling the card uh, the cards with uh, separate curves like that like i have over here and uh, basically binding them all together to one curve so you can use control curve as a like temporary control for multiple cards if you uh, create control curve you'll see that there is another curve in the middle of this all and you can use this curve to control multiple cur uh, curves that you selected before just like that and when you are done with it you just select everything and click apply and it will now uh, basically apply it to this shape so control curve again it will create a curve in the middle and you change something that you want and after that you click apply again and that's it 
and now it's uh, deleted and the shape is applied. So this should not be used uh, instead of bind. Uh, it should be used just for small adjustments of multiple um, curves, just uh, like I showed you. Because if you uh, try some drastic movements with it, for example, you will start rotating it and stuff like that, you will not like the result. So control curve is just a simple deformer to quickly adjust the shape of the multiple cards. All right, so uh, now we covered basically almost everything. We still have, haven't covered the uh, collections, but collections are very simple. They are just uh, collections of layers, so you can have more uh, layers than this by creating a new collection. For example, um, if you create my collection, you will see that now we have main, hidden, and my collection. And uh, they are all separate. You can transfer cards between them. You have some options like clear, move up, merge, and stuff like that. Uh, this is very advanced thing. You can use it uh, to, uh, if you have very complex project you, or you want something hidden, uh, you can uh, use it, uh, use the collections. And basically, for example, I want this first, the first curves in the, sec uh, in the hidden collection. I will just uh, add selection to layer, just like that. And now the first layer on the main la uh, collection is uh, empty and the zeroth layer, I mean, and this zeroth now is uh, filled in the hidden uh, collection. And if I just disable the hidden, delete, delete the hidden, it will just transfer it back to the main. And that's it. And there are a lot of things you can do with the collections, but uh, it's pretty advanced. You can hover over it and read about uh, what it can do. Now under the options, we have quite a few options available. Uh, first, export and import curves. If you uh, like your, for example, braid over here, or you've created a, a very cool shape that you want to, it to be reused in other projects, do not try to export it using Maya. It will break it because Maya renames everything and the stuff will break. Use this import and export uh, options over here so you select the curves that you want to export to another project you click export you save it to a separate file and you then click import in this another uh, is in another project to import them to that project from the file and that's it and it will uh, handle the renaming the layers everything for you so just use this uh, these options if you need to export your work or templates to another project. Now change factor, uh, scale factor and precision. There is a separate video for uh, this function, uh, but it basically you do not really need it unless you have some old projects that needs to be updated or stuff like that. Uh, scale factor will determine the initial size of the card. As you can see, it's quite small, but it's uh, pretty a good size for natural uh, size of the human like that for example so this is to scale to real world so this is a nice hair card over here but if you want it bigger you just uh, go to the scale factor increase it to one for example uh, save new card and as you can see it's not twice it's now twice as big but the default value 0 0.5 is the best value in my opinion for a real scale humans uh, and uh, groom that you can make for them. Uh, precision scale, just leave it as it is. If you don't, uh, if you need some more information, there will be a link in the description. Now, global curve thickness will just increase the thickness of the uh, curve that Maya draws. For example, if I increase it to eight and I will update curves, you'll see that all of the curves are now much thicker and that they're they will be easier to spot. Uh, by default, it's minus one, just like that. And they are pretty thin. Uh, now set uh, ambient occlusion options are for legacy Maya versions, for example, 2019 and stuff like that. It uh, will allow you to use a trick with uh, ambient occlusion. So you'll be able to see curves through the texture, but it's old trick. It doesn't work in later Maya versions. Right now, you just need to use the X-ray function. Now the transparency settings are very important because by default Maya will show the transparency uh, in a very ugly way just like that object sorting as you can see now it uh, it just it is just horrible 
uh, and you cannot work like that. It's very fast, of course. Yeah, you'll have a lot of FPS on your uh, viewport, but it's just uh, horrible. So uh, by default, I recommend the depth peeling option over here it's very slow uh, well it's not very slow it's as you can see it's fine but uh, it's much slower but you will at least see everything as it should be in my viewport the transparency uh, so in order to change it you usually go to viewport this option over here and you change some options over here but uh, in curve tools you can just go to transparency and depth transparency and it will set all the options for you now convert curve is a very simple function for example i have a warp card over here i explained you the difference before and you can just convert it to extrude card right and I just, just, i'll just click to extrude card and we'll convert it to extrude as you can see we have a uh, fewer options but it's now much faster in the viewport it's a recommended uh, type of card for short hair extrude cards but if you want to switch you can just uh, for example switch back to warp cards by using this convert curves function now duplicate and unparent curve is uh, another useful utility if you want uh, all of the curves let me just show you if you want all of the curves from your project to be uh, like a separate objects that you for example can export somewhere if you need you can just duplicate and unparent curves like that it will take a little bit because my duplication is a little bit slow but as you can see now we have all of the all of our 521 curves as a separate curves like that and now they are not connected to our original project and you can do whatever you want with them now there are plenty of other options available you can uh, read about them by just hovering over them options and hover right and you hovering with your mouse and you will see that fill creates only curves when, ena when enabled fill function will only create curves not the geo so for example if i enable this fill only create curves i will and i will then then click fill you'll see that i have only curves now so this is just a small variation that you might need for your project and there are plenty of those in those uh, options over here you can read and uh, you can change number of active layers for example you can have up to 80 layers and stuff like that so just explore those options don't worry and if you don't like something if something went wrong with the options you can always just reset using this button and that's it so i hope you enjoyed this in-depth look on all of the functions of gs curve tools uh, again options i skipped uh, a lot of options over here uh, just because they are very rarely used but uh, they are there if you need them um, just read about them in the documentation or read about them when you hover over the option it will explain you everything so, yeah, I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, uh, don't forget to leave a like or share with your friends if they need to, to work uh, with Maya and create hair like uh, that. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you next time.